What's something you learned embarrassingly late in life? I'm from Mississippi, and until I was 18, I thought that everyone else in the country counted with their own state. I, instead of one Mississippi, two Mississippi, they would count one Nevada, two Nevada, or one Maryland, two Maryland. If you're from Transylvania, then it's one, ah, 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 and so on. I'm Australia, we say hippopotamus. It wasn't until I was about 20 that I discovered that you're supposed to add water to condensed soup. Very vividly remember eating condensed tomato soup in my dorm room without any water, so it was essentially eating ketchup. That players on American sports teams do not all originally come from the area where their team is from. My dad was fond of framing questions to my brother and Ormi regarding just what on earth we were doing, up to age 10 or so, when it no longer seemed necessary, using the term pray tell, as in what are you doing with the tools. Pray tell, I presumed a prattle, was a gentle equivalent to goober, or dummy. One day I corrected my brother about some misconception he had, addressing him as you, prattel. What did you call him? asked dad, who happened to be nearby. A prattel, you call us that all the time. I do, yeah, you say, what is that supposed to be, prattle, I'd never seen him laugh through a face palm before, but knowledge is power, France is bacon, I didn't know tortilla chips were made out of tortillas until I was 20 years old and saw the line cook at my job, cut up a tortilla and throw it in the deep fryer, oh, oh, I thought ponies were just baby horses until the age of 23, edit, until I was 23, I didn't think horses, I didn't think horses aged like turtles. I'm dumb, but not that dumb. Okay, so I read that as baby horses are known as ponies until they officially become adult horses at the age of 23, considering that the average lifespan of a horse is like 30 years or something, I was shocked at the commenters below you had thought the exact same statistic as you did. You fool. When I was 10, I thought the word masturbate meant to contemplate. So I told my math teacher that I needed more time to masturbate my math problem. Also, when I was 15, I learned that a woman's eggs were not the same size as chicken egg. I thought periods were so bloody because the chicken-sized egg was stretching them out. Until I was in school for environmental studies, I thought morning dove was morning dove. I usually heard them calling in the mornings, so morning made sense to me. I just learned this now. Thanks. Well, shit. I thought Sedan was a car brand until I was 22. I thought that until I heard the joke, why do chicken coops have two doors? Coos otherwise they'd be chicken sedans and it all made sense. Why I was really young, my sister told me, she threw her guts up. So I was really afraid of vomiting my entire insides up for years. I was maybe 17 or 18 before learning that it was Timbuktu, not Timbuktu. I thought there was an original Timbuk out there somewhere. I was about 25 when I found out Timbuktu was a real place. I had thought it was just an expression for a faraway place. Things aren't supposed to start to get blurry at about 15, 20 feet. Learned I needed glasses at like 26 on one of these threads. Yes, people, you are supposed to be able to see individual leaves on tree. Hope someone else can be helped like I was. I'll never forget the first time I looked up into the night sky after I got glasses and realized that you can, in fact, see the moon clearly. I assumed people who depicted it in art were taking creative license, but they knew it should look like that for some reason, and that the human eye was incapable of seeing the moon without also seeing two other blurrier moons, sort of overlapping it. It blew my mind. It was only when I saw someone post a photo on social media of what lights at night look like when you have an astigmatism and all the comments that I realized I have an astigmatism and that lights don't look like that to everyone. To that a prostitute doesn't actually sell a piece of their body. Backstory. My mom and I were watching the scene from Titanic where Jack tells Rose that he painted a one-legged prostitute. I asked my mom what a prostitute was and she told me it's someone who sells their body for money. I could not fathom why someone would sell their leg for like $30. Lola, that was just a perfect confluence of unrelated information to confuse you. It was a completely logical connection to make. When people say, quote unquote, I thought they were saying, quote unquote, till, till. I always thought it was, quote, end quote. 
I live near the hospital for joint diseases. When I was a kid, I thought it was a special hospital for people who had two different diseases at the same time. A person with multiple diseases here. I will raise this at the next meeting with the hope of adopting it. Moving cross country, driving east to west, crossing from Idaho to Oregon, noticed huge fields with signs for the All Eater Potato Company. So I was in my early 20s when I figured out or oh, Ida wasn't just a brand name, but was because their potatoes came from Oregon and Idaho. When I was a teenager, I posted a status online that said I was jacking off. I thought that meant you were just bored and wasting time, until my older sister messaged me, horrified. When I was a teenager, I thought the expression to eat someone out meant the same thing as to chew someone out. Unfortunately, I was educated on this after I told someone in a church that I wasn't expecting to be eaten out that morning at breakfast. I was 17 low. My parents were divorced the whole time, and my mum was not, in fact, taking a vacation lio. We're telling our kids that certain actors are on vacation when we need a change of scenery from a certain show like Blippi or Cocomelon or something. Sorry, Forrest. That a coma was a coma. Until I was probably 19, I thought it was a coma. I thought you fell into a coma. For the longest time, I thought astigmatism was astigmatism. So I think we cancel each other out. I once did an entire assignment thinking that ethics and ethnics were the same word. Oral contraceptive. You mean you can get pregnant just from doing that? Let me tell you about how I thought you were awarded a Pulitzer Prize. Not too late in life, but I thought my parents were making Roman Cokes until I went to college. Which I think is a much better name for the drink anyway. Boom and Coke. I had to say it out loud to get it. Now I understand. Houston is not the name of the guy astronauts talk to. Houston, we have a problem. Your name isn't Houston. I learned that pork and beans are not called cowboy beans. I was 18 and asked a grocery store clerk to help me find the cowboy beans. We were looking everywhere and I was getting frustrated because I know that every store carries these beans. After a while I pick up a pork and beans can with a picture and say, See, it looks just like this. He says you mean pork and beans. Then I realized that my mom called them so that I would eat them. The look of disappointment from that grocery store, Clark haunts me to this day. Dude, that's fucking hilarious. Cowboy beans is a real thing, and different families make it different, but it's generally baked beans with added meat, so pork and beans would technically qualify, although usually there's a higher meat ratio if you make them for a potluck or something. My family recipe has bacon, ground beef, and maybe a little ground Italian if you're feeling fancy. Also, sometimes other types of canned beans are added and simmered in the sauce for a bit. Edit. For everyone asking how this differs from chili, the only way I've seen them made around me is with Bush's baked beans or a homemade but similar sauce as the base. So, it's a sweet molasses, brown sugar sauce as a chili seasoned tomato base sauce. Also, more bacon than one would usually put in chili. That bonsai are not a species of tree, but a way to grow them. Any tree can be a bonsai. I didn't know that. Coca and cocoa are two different plants, not one magical organism. If one plant gave us both cocaine and chocolate, that would be a compelling reason to believe there is a god and he wants us to fucking party edit. Oh wow, this blew up. Thank you for the awards and internet point. I suspected it was the same with lots of people, but I found out it wasn't guerrilla warfare, but guerrilla warfare, but guerrilla warfare, maybe in my twenties. The disappoints of growing up? I'll take it a step further. I thought it was racist, because I always heard about the guerrilla fighters in Africa. I was just like, dude, they're soldiers. You can keep that shit to yourself. I think I was in college when I realized that Mario and Luigi are plumbers. I thought they just went and up down these tubes just because that was the theme of the gag. I... I'm 44 and never made the connection between the pipes and the plumbers. Um, don't tell my kids, they'll never let me live it down. I was probably 20, 1 or 22 when I learned that whole milk is only 3 fat. I always thought it was 100, and when I saw reduced as being 2, I thought reduced as being 2, we thought why wouldn't they do 50 or somewhere in the middle? Would 100 fat not just be literal fate? 
I never knew it was three. I thought whole milk had one hundred of the fat it is supposed to have, and two milk had ninety, eighteen less fat than whole milk. A few months ago, two of my colleagues both handed in their notice at around the same time. I kept reading, hearing a sentence. They are both moving on to pastures new being thrown about the office in the weeks leading up to them leaving, and I hadn't heard this phrase before, and thought that was the name of the rival company that they were going to. I thought it was weird that nobody was talking about how they were both leaving for the same company. I was in the car with one of the ones who was leaving and said, so where is that you and X are going to be working? Is it? And just before I could embarrass myself and say, pastures new, they interrupted me and said they're not going to the same place and asked me where I had heard that. I think at that moment I realized I was stupid and didn't mention it again. I personally have never heard someone say it that way. I've always heard new pastures. Edit. Greener pastures is what I was thinking. The saying is, nip it in the bud and not in fact in nip it in the butt. Screenshot taken, sent to my husband. I used to think that the Diet Coke bottles on the side of the road, which were half full of pale yellow liquid, were unfinished Diet Cokies that had been bleached by the sun. About two years ago, I saw one of these bottles being ejected from a truck, and I realized the awful truth. I'm 53. My sister was in her 50s when she found out the meaning of, you have an addictive personality. She thought after all these years of therapy that it meant that people were addicted to her personality. We laugh hysterically when we talk about this in a very sad way. I thought that horses had toes until I was 22. I thought the hoof was a horseshoe and the toes were tucked inside. How did I learn how wrong I was, you ask? I was walking past a cavalry museum and saw a horse statue and loudly remarked it must hurt so bad when they fold a horse's toes to put them into the shoe. Dozens of horse enthusiasts turned and looked at me with wild bewilderment in their eyes. For those learning today, horses basically have a single toe per leg. Hutps, I am good. Comic 7G. Bonk. This one absolutely made me giggle. Just the visual of this happening is fantastic. I hate the image you just put in my head of a completely normal looking horse, but with human feet. This is endlessly distressing. If horses really looked like that, I'd cram their feet in holes too.